Okay. So this is uh, lecture two, and that's covered. Um, it was the main part of it was uh, where you were doing questions. So I'll do the work for the questions, and then I introduced um, uh, UDLs at the end. So um, if you want, you could uh, stop stop the videos when we come to these particular problems and have a go at them. So the first one was uh, just for fun and you can see you can use symmetry here to find what the reaction is A for example. And you can see it's going to be 5 kilonewtons. So what I'll do is um, I will do it not for fun but uh, I'll do it formally. So how would you formally solve this this problem if you wanted to find the reaction at A? So if I was looking for reactions, I would uh, I would just jump in with my uh, taking moments. I'm looking for the A reaction. So uh, the one I would choose would be to take moments around C to get rid of that unknown. So I take moments at C. I'll go clockwise even though it's a bit confusing, tempting to go anti-clockwise, but I'll stay with the UE convention, go clockwise, and then draw in some arrows there to see what should be positive or negative moments. The first one, so we would label this up as RAY and RCY. Okay. And uh, I've got, uh, what have I got? Uh, I've got a pivot at that point, so I'm going to measure the distance from C to A. It's going to be two meters. So that uh, that clock face is going upwards, so it's agreeing with this upwards direction, and so that will give me two R A Y, and uh, the next one I can see is this force coming down. So it's going to be a negative because these two arrows don't agree with one another. Do you see that? So that was a minus 10. Uh, so that's its force and then times it by its distance. So its distance is 1 meter this time. So times by 1 equals 0. <coughs> so we've got 2 RAY equals 10. So that gives me that R A Y equals 10 divided by 2. So we've got 5 kilonewtons. So that's doing that problem. Not for fun, but, but seriously, I guess. Okay. So the next one, again, this is a just for fun problem. So we can see that we've got everything's in balance so we can see straight away we've got 120 pushing down we've got two reactions so 120 pushing down divided by 2 will give me 60 so uh, we've got R B Y equals 60 kilonewtons okay so let's do it seriously So what would we, we do if we wanted to do this uh, more formally? So we're looking for the reaction at B. So what I want to do is to take my uh, reaction, my unknown at R, D, Y out. So what I do is I set that to be my pivot point. Uh, we go around clockwise. So this time put your clock face on. So things on the left we're looking, seeing if they're coming up, they're going to be positive. And things on the right of that pivot, if they are going down, then they will be uh, positive. Okay, so I'm going to take moments at D, and I'm going to go around clockwise, and that will find me the reaction at B. <coughs> so let's start with this force here. So we've got 10 kilonewtons. How far are we away from 
so this is, uh, I should point out, that's overall two meters. So if um, we are one meter, two meters away from the D joint there, so you've got uh, a force which is coming downwards, but the clock face wants to turn sort of that way, so it's going to be a negative. So I've got a minus 10 times 3. Do you see that? You've got a total distance of 3 meters from there to there. The next one is uh, we've got this force coming upwards. So it's agreeing with the clock face now. It's going in the same direction. Um, and it's a distance of 2 meters away. So that's going to be plus 2 RBY. And then finally we've got this force here, which is uh, halfway split in the middle of the beam. So that is going to be minus 100 times by 1. Okay, so halfway across, half of 2 is 1. And now let's pay attention to what's on this side here. So this force, this clock face is turning down and this is turning down. So that means it's going to be a positive moment. It's going to be 10 times by distance of 1 equals 0. So what we got? Let's bring stuff together. So I've got 2RBY. We've got a minus 30, uh, a minus, well, let's write these out, minus 30, minus 100, plus 10. I'm going to need a calculator, aren't I? Hey, where's my, oh yeah, there's my baby. beautiful calculator. Right, so uh, 2RBY, uh, I make that to be a minus 120 on the left, so take it over to the right, 120. So we've got RBY equals 60 kilonewtons. Okay, so that's doing it seriously. Okay, now let's do um, more of a uh, more of a serious problem. So we're getting serious now. So this one has to be done in a formal way, um, and we're looking for the reaction at D. So if we're taking the reaction at D, it would seem sensible of um, let's take moments around. B and get rid of that term. So we've got R B Y there, R D Y in that direction, and we're going to take moments there. Let's put on our clock. Our clock is turning, so we're looking for the arrows to line up, and then they're going to be positive. So this one here is going to be a negative moment. I've got a positive moment, a negative moment, and a positive moment. Okay. So we're at this point here. We are going to be taking moments at B and we'll go around clockwise. So the first one I can see is this 100. It doesn't agree with the clock turning, so it's going to be a minus 100. Its distance from there to the pivot is 1 meter. And the next one here, that's the overall length is 2 meters, I should point out. So the overall length is 2 meters. So we are, our clock wants to turn downwards and our arrow is going downwards. So that's going to be a positive 100. And its distance from there to there is half of 2. So it's times by 1. 
Next one we're going to get is the distance to here to here. So don't forget this is a force, R, D, Y, it's actually what we're looking for. It's coming upwards. Our clock face wants to go downwards, so it's going to be a minus. So we've got 2 R, D, Y. We've got a distance of 2 meters to cover that. And then finally, we've got this force at the end. So to get to there, it's 3 meters. It is going in the same direction as my clock face, so it's going to be plus 10 times by 3 equals 0. So, next line of algebra, well I can see that cancels with that. So that's going to give me 2RDY equals 30. So RDY equals 15 kilonewtons. Right, yeah. so um, we're getting a little bit more serious, let's move on. So this is the fourth problem I asked you to do. And this one here, we're showing a force coming down here. And just out of, uh, make it a little bit, a bit different, we've got force coming from the bottom, pushing up. <coughs> so forces can be applied from the from below as well as from above. So we wanted to find for this problem the reactions at A and the reactions at D. So this is more of a standard problem where we're going to find both reactions and for that we probably might as well start off resolving the forces in the y direction because we need to find both we need to find two equations. You could, if you wanted to, to, you could take moments at A and you could take moments at D if you wanted to. Or you um, could follow the textbook which is to uh, sum up forces in the Y direction and then take moments at a joint of your, your choice. So we'll follow the textbook style. So we'll define a force to be positive if it's pointing upwards. So we've got R A Y there, and we've got R D Y there. So now let's sum up my forces. So I've got an R A Y going upwards. I've got a hundred coming down. I'm working in kilonewtons, and then I've got uh, ten coming up. And then finally we've got the R D Y and that's going upwards. So let's tidy this up before we move on to our next equation. So we have R A Y plus R D Y equals well minus 100 plus 10 leaves me with 90 so that's going to be my equation 1. <coughs> next I need to choose um, well, as I said, I mean, I could actually choose anywhere on the beam, but I need, uh, the most logical thing is to choose a point where you're going to take moments, and it kind of makes sense to take moments at A because uh, I can just have a clock face. Everything is twisting down this way, so that's going to be a positive moment, negative moment, and a negative moment. So let's do it like that. So we're going to take moments and we're going to take them at A and we go around clockwise like that. So the first one we can see is the clock is turning in the same direction as this force so that's going to give me a hundred times one. This one here, this force is now not agreeing, it's going in the opposite direction so it's going to be a minus ten and what's its distance? Well it's overall it's three meters 1 plus 2 is 3. And finally we've got the RD coming up so that's 4 meters away so minus 4 times RDY equals 0. So we have 4 RDY so um, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, mental algebra in my head so I make that to be 4 RD equals 70 so 
R D Y. Can we do that in our head? Well, half seventy thirty five, half uh, thirty five, seventeen point five. Don't be here. Check on your calculator. So we've got um, kilonewtons there. Gonna s so that will I'll, I suppose I should label this up as equation two. Substitute two into one, and we're therefore going to get R A Y equals seventy. Take away seventeen point five equals. Uh, seventy-two point five kilonewtons. Okay. So let's underline these solutions. <coughs> Job done. And so move on to the last problem I asked you to do in the lecture. Which was uh, a bit more interesting. This one, so a bit of a. Uh, it's actually it's a, it's, it turns out to be an easy problem, really, but it requires a little bit of thinking of what we need to do next. So, the the problem is poised. That is, what's the um, reaction at R D that will get me the uh, the maximum reaction there? So I'm going to apply a force here. And I want to get the maximum RD reaction. Well, what uh, what will that be? So we're applying a force. We want this to uh, respond to uh, um, the force that's been applied, and we want to get this this RD to be large as possible. So that means that we want the force that we're applying at E to be uh, as large as possible. Okay, so let's think about what the um, reaction will be at, at uh, position A. So we're pushing down onto the beam and we want RD to then push back as much as possible okay um, so how could we do that without me toppling the beam entirely so we want to be pushing down but we don't want this thing to be toppling because we're doing statics so if we don't want this thing to be toppling then we can't have a negative. We must have a reaction of R A Y equals zero. So it actually becomes a seesaw problem. Okay. So does that make sense? So if I'm pushing down as much as possible here, if this was going to give me a negative value, that means that this beam is lifting off the beam. If I'm getting a reaction of, let's say, 10 kilonewtons, then that means the total force of, of stuff pushing down has been shared between these two reactions. So the trick to answer this question is to note that R A Y equals zero. So given that we know that, can we now solve the problem? So, um, how are we going to do this? How did I do this? I, I don't know. Um, I think maybe I should um, 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 I could take moments I think. So the first thing I think I should do is to find out what the maximum force is that I'm going to push down on there. So I'm going to take moments at D. And see what that gives me. So we'll take moments at D. We'll go 
clockwise. So we need to call this a value. So we'll call this um, e. Yeah, we'll call it e, the false e. So uh, that's going to be four times e. Now let's uh, go over to the. So I've done that that one on the right hand side. So now let's go over to the left hand side. And so we've got 50 coming up. It's agreeing with the clock. It wants to go in the same way. So it's going to be a positive as well. So plus 50 times 5. Next one is going to be this distance from here to here. 7 plus 5 will be 12. It's coming downward, so it's a minus 100 times 12. I'm thinking if E doesn't work out to be positive, we know we've done something seriously wrong. The final one is a false, and we've decided that that false is going to be zero for the case where the beam's not going to topple. So we can just ignore it. Zero times, what will that be? 14. So that equals zero. Um, so let's work this out. We've got 4e plus 125. Take away 1200 equals zero. I will use my calculator and find out what the e force is going to be. So e is going to be 120. Uh, sorry, 1200. Take away 250 and then divide it by 4. Okay, so that's my result. So 2375 is the maximum force that we can be pushing down without toppling. And we were asked to find the maximum. Uh, reaction at RD. So now uh, we're to solve that we will solve the forces and add them up. So the first force, that's the one I'm interested in, is that one there. Next one I've got a plus 50 so that's that one there. This one here it'll be minus 100 and this one here we've just worked out to be minus 237.5 equals 0. So R, D, Y, the maximum it can be is going to be 237 plus 100 take away 50 gives me the result 287.5 kilonewtons. Okay, so that one required a little bit of uh, uh, can you get your engineering thinking cap on? Right, so next, moved on to revision what we did in the previous lecture. So, or actually revision what we should have done. I've kind of given up the flip with the flip teaching later on. Didn't really pan out. So the flipped, uh, the flipped uh, videos were discussing how. Statics is all about looking at bodies that aren't moving. So that would mean a body being a 3D shape. Um, our sum of forces is going to... Um, uh, all the forces that have been pushed on that body, they have to sum up to be zero. Because we're going to apply Newton's law. Force is mass times acceleration. So if my sum of my forces is zero then my body's not going to move, at least it's not going to accelerate. Okay, It might actually be moving at a constant velocity or something. So uh, we are just going to be looking at 2D problems, so that pans out to the fact that we can sum up our forces in the X direction, and they should be zero, and we can sum up our forces in the Y direction, <coughs> and they're going to be zero. Guys, if you got a cup of tea, mm. 
T. Okay. Right. So the next thing is uh, we are not looking at point forces, but we're looking at bodies. So we've got forces being applied to my body here. So the other thing is is that my body is not accelerating and it's not going to be moving around uh, in, a, in a circle. So it's not rotating, so that means that the sum of moments is going to be zero. And once we've got those three states, at least for a 2D body, uh, if we was doing 3D we would need to sum the forces in the, in the third component, in the Z direction. We then are in a state of equilibrium. Okay. When you come to <coughs> sorry. when you come to do these problems, always draw a nice diagram. Um, and when you see your hinges, so if you've got a hinge. You're going to replace the hinge with two reactions. Let's say this hinge is A. So that's going to be RAX and RAY. If you see like a pivot or something like that, that's on my B position. And then I'm going to replace that with a reaction force RBY. Okay, so these normally call them R because I'm referring to reactions, forces. There are external forces are being applied to the body. So in the notes they talk about the different kind of surfaces you could have. So we could imagine we've got maybe our ladder on a smooth surface. So since it's smooth, that means that if there's any force being applied left to right, it will just slide. So the only force that it can have is going to be this R Y force in that direction. If we had a little bit of friction here, however, so the ladder is um, on a rough floor, then we would have to introduce a reaction in the X direction as well as the Y direction. Other symbols that you might come across to represent uh, that we are looking at a just a single RY reaction would be looking at a pivot with little kind of wheels on it or a roller, baked bean tin, something like that. For your hinges, so your hinges are going to look something like this, like a kind of semicircle with a, a bolt going through the, uh, the um, whoops, going through the, the member and in which case then you're going to have two reactions at those points so R X and R Y okay. the convention that we're using in UE uh, in this module is that forces on the whole we will be defining as uh, as positive if they're going upwards and if they're going left to right positive and uh, clockwise moments will be positive now these are forces in uh, in reference to the reactions okay so our reactions will we want to be pointing them in this way and this way um, and uh, this clockwise motion is when I sum up my moments at some point, wherever that might be. I'm going to go around in that direction. Let's move on to UDLs. So we've got this nice PowerPoint for our UDL here. Um, and I have to reduce me a little bit. Uh, right, so for what we what I'm going to do is start off is uh, consider introduce some of the the terms that you need to 
um, and so for the UDL. So first of all, it's uniformly disputed load, and it will have a value of kilonewtons per meter or newtons per meter, and that tells me because uh, the the weight is all distributed across the the load dis uh, evenly, and so every meter worth of this uh, this the section that I have will have a certain amount of force pushing down okay so for example if I had 10 newtons per meter and I had uh, 2 meters of a UDL that would give me 2 times 10 so we'd have a total of 20 newtons pushing down okay you can see that the meter and the newton per meter the meters are um, cancelling out and leaving us with just newtons so that's the the basic concept so if I'm at some I've got a UDL here being supported by two uh, reaction points here and I'm wondering what is the total force of this section of the UDL well to work that out I need to take the UDL value whatever that might be and then multiply it by x the distance that I've covered so that's the total force up to that point so if I was looking at this imagining now this to be um, how would this behave as a concentrated load well it would behave as a concentrated load in the middle wouldn't it so that force would act at a position half x so the moment that the UDL would, would create, if we were taking moments around um, R1 here, so we're, we're taking moments here, is going to be the force, which is UDL times X, times by the distance to get from here to here. So that will be half X. Okay. So this, in this particular case, we've decided to take the pivot at the R1 location. So UDL times X times by half X, well, that leaves us with this expression here, half the UDL value times X squared. So now let's use that um, to work out what R1 for R2 is going to be sorry. So we're going to sum up all the moments and go all the way to the end. For equilibrium, we must have that uh, all the moments when they uh, go across the beam are going to sum up to zero. Well, the x isn't going to change as I move all the way to the bottom of the beam, is it? So my expression half UDL x squared is going to stay the same, so that'll be the same. And then finally, when I get to the end of the beam, um, uh, I will then have a moment of the R2 going upwards times by the length of that beam. So we've got that expression there. So let's say that the beam has a length L. So we can then substitute that into this expression here. So I'm going to place the X with L uh, the x squared with L squared and the distance of the beam with L well we can tidy that up a little bit and that gives us that the reaction therefore at that R2 position is will be half the UDL uh, value times by L and that's not a surprise that's uh, not a stunner because again we could apply what we was doing at the beginning of the lecture and using symmetry if this is the exp if this is uh, my UDL value, what is the total force of the UDL value? Will it be the UDL times by L? So that's the total force coming down. Assuming that we're going to have equal reactions R1 and R2, then the reaction at R1 or R2 will be half UDL. So we've kind of more formally proven that by taking moments around R1. Here's a, uh, so this would have been a turning point question where we can solve it for 
something where we've got some real numbers. So we've got a 10 meter long beam. We have a UDL value of 5 newtons per meter. So I'm going to sum moments at A. And uh, what's that going to give me? Well, the first thing is let's work out what the moment is for the UDL. So I need to know its uh, force. So the force is going to be what? Well, to find the force, um, uh, I'm going to take... Um, uh, well, what the hell am I doing there? Um, I'm going to... Um, sorry, I'm... I'm finding the moment here so the force is going to be the 5 times the 10 so that will give me the 50 so that's the force that we've got and um, we uh, then need to say where is the center of this UDL well that's going to be halfway along so that's going to be 5 meters so the moment of the UDL will be 5 times 10, that's the force, times by 5, and that's the distance to the middle of the UDL. So that gives us a total moment of 250 newton meters. The other moment that we have is, is going to be the from this reaction here, this RBY term. So I could, should put maybe a little Y there. So the distance from there to the other reaction is going to be 10. So, and if I've decided that I'm going clockwise, so the f my UDL is going to create a positive 250. This one is going to go in the opposite direction, so we're going to have minus, so we're going to have minus 10 RBY times by the distance to get from here to here. Uh, that should be a t multiplication sign, looks like an X. Uh, and that will uh, be, um, let's rearrange this, and we can see that RBY ends up as 25 uh, newtons. So that's kind of doing this problem more formally. Again, you could just do it by symmetry, it's an easy problem. You could say, well, I know that 5 times 10 is the total force, so 50 newtons is the total force pushing down. And I'm going to have symmetry A and B will have the same amount. So therefore, we've got 25 newtons. Okay. So I'm just solving that problem using moments as opposed to using the symmetry and force argument. Okay, so... Um, Finish the um, the lecture uh, with um, a couple of uh, UDL problems, which I have lost, so I'll make them up again. So we do one meter, have a reaction there, another meter. And then we have two meters. Where I put my UDL, and then another meter to the final reaction. Let's put a load of I don't know twenty newtons there. We're going to have the UDL. They have sort of. Um, symbols like little gates or sometimes they're kind of like just filled in blocks and what should we do for the UDL shall we go um, keep it symbol uh, 5 newtons per meter that won't fall off will it potentially it will do <laughs> Um, twenty five. Okay, so that's a, that 
that is kind of a nice problem to do. So it's a simple. Uh, it looks. Um, <coughs> it's going to give us an interesting result. So do uh, what looks to be a complicated problem here. So when you're f uh, finding your reactions, let's say uh, this is called R A Y. And this one is RBY, and we need to find the reactions. Um, when you're doing a UDL problem and you're looking for the reactions, what do you do? Well, to solve that kind of problem, you convert your UDL into a concentrated load. So you draw another diagram underneath where you replace your UDL. with a concentrated load. So this UDL is 2 meters long so it has a total of 10 newtons. So maybe do a little bit of rough maths on the side. So 2 times 5 equals 10. And then the next thing that you'll need to do is to work out where is the center. And a lot of people go wrong here. So the first way to uh, the first thing that you want to do to work out the center is to take the distance of the UDL, two meters, and divide it by two. So that gives me one meter, and then make a little mark, and that's where you need to go. So you need to go from one meter from that position. So then you can say, well, to get to that position, we need to add on this other meter, which is the start point of the UDL. So the center of the UDL is going to be 2 meters. So we've got 2 meters to get to there, 1 meter to get to there, and I've got 10 newtons there. And then to get all the way to the end where the RB is, we've got 4 meters. Okay, so we'll do it, <coughs> we'll solve this problem textbook style, where they start off with forces, sum them up going upwards, so minus 20 plus RAY minus 10 plus RBY equals 0, so RAY plus RBY equals 30 okay and then I will um, take moments where am I going to take moments in this problem well it looks like uh, maybe take moments at, uh, at A put a little clock face on so we'll take moments at A So uh, what's the first one we can see? Well, we'll st start on this side here. So we've got um, uh, that is going to be a negative moment, minus 20 times 1. And then we've got 10 times 2. OK, it's a positive moment, both going down. And then minus 4RBY equals 0. So therefore, 4RBY equals minus 20 plus 20 equals 0. So RBY equals 0. Okie dokie, substitute that back into equation 1. And that gives us RAY equals 30. Okay, so we we have the special case there of the same weight pushing down on both sides, which in effect means that this reaction then becomes well, you don't require it to be there. So that's a simple UDL problem. I'll finish with uh, another one. 
So we'll do something similar. We'll have one meter here. Then we'll have a reaction. One meter here. Two meters. Well, we have a UDL. Then we have a reaction here. And then another two meters. And then, I don't know, uh, one meter. Well, we'll have another UDL. So we've got a force here. Let's, uh, let's call this uh, 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 about 80 newtons, say. Here we've got a UDL. I'll draw it this time shaded. So UDL, uh, which will be 20 newtons per meter. And then at the end here, we have another UDL. And let's call this one, I think about 10 newtons per meter. Okay, can we solve this problem? So we need to replace our UDLs with concentrated loads. So we draw a diagram underneath. Uh, can we work out where the center of masses are? So that's the points we're interested in here. So this is two meters long. So half of two meters is one meter. So it's one meter from this start location. So one meter plus one meter is two meters. So that's where the center of that UDL is. Then I need to go for another meter to get to the reaction. Okay, what about this? Well, this is one meter long, so the center will be half a meter from this start location. So to get to that, we need to go two and a half meters. Okay. This one is one meter to get to there. We've got 80 newtons coming down here. This is 20, it's 2 meters long, so it's going to be 40 newtons. This is 10 newtons per meter, it's 1 meter long, so 1 times 10 is going to be 10, so that's going to be 10 there. So I'll do it the book style, so sum up my forces. So I'm going to have minus 20, this is my RAY, plus RAY minus 40 plus RBY, see I'm scanning through the beam, and then minus 10 equals 0. Let's tidy this up before we move on to taking moments. RAY plus RBY equals, oh not a nice number, 130. Will we get a horrible result? I wonder. Next, let's take moments. Does it make sense to take moments any particular place? I would say let's take moments at A. So I'm going to take my clock and go around this way. So the 80 is not going where the clock wants to go on that side, so that's going to be minus 80 times by 1. Distance from here to this, the center of the UDL is going to be uh, 2 meters and it's going in the way that the clock wants to go, so plus 40 times by 2. And this one here, the reaction is going in the opposite way of that reaction, so that's a minus 3 meters to get to it, RBY. And then finally the 10 is going in the same way that the clock wants to go. Clock wants to go downwards, 10 wants to go downwards. So we've got, uh, what, 2, 3, 
5.5. So 5.5 times 10. So let's tidy this up. We then have 3RBY equals minus 80. I will use my calculator. Minus 80. Oh, plus 80. 40 times 2 is plus 80. Plus 55. And that's not going to give me a nice number. So f uh, 55, therefore, RBY equals 55 divided by 3. Okay, for that, when you press your SD button, now uh, this is a common mistake I see. So you, a lot of people write down 18.3. So you have to press your SD button once, and then press your SD button at again, and get the 18.333, because you probably can't see the little dot above it. Uh, we'll write this answer to 5 sig fig, 18.3. Three three kilonewtons, five uh, significant figures, and then that will give me R A Y equals a hundred and thirty. Take away eighteen point one two three. So use your calculator to work out what the last digit should be. So one 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 point six six seven kilonewtons. Okay. So then that was uh, actually we didn't do those two problems in the lecture. We ran out of time, but that was the uh, that was uh, the plan for the lecture. So thank you. Bye bye.